Hello, and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is using the ITX 10.1 REST adapter. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. In this three-part practical demonstration, I will use the REST adapter in a map to call a third-party service. This is a simple time-based API that has been exposed on the remote website worldtimeapi.org. For the second part, I will use the REST adapter to call a map that has been exposed via the ITX 10.1 REST API. This has been deployed locally and is accessible via the URL shown on the screen ending with output only. For the final part, I will show you how I designed the map that I then exposed via the REST API. Here I am in my ITX 10.1 design studio and I'm going to create a new extender project and call this project 1. Within the project I'm going to create a simple type tree called generic.mtt and within that type tree I'm going to add just one object and I'm going to call that text item. At the moment it is a category so I'm going to change it to an item and then from the tree menu I'm going to choose analyze structure and logic to ensure the tree is ready to go which it is. Okay so now I can save and close my type tree I don't need that anymore I can go into my map source file area and create a new map source. I shall call this map source.mms and then within map source I'm going to create a new map. We will call this test1. My map needs only an output card, which I shall create now and call out1. The type tree I shall use is the one I created, generic.mtt and the object within it is just text item. Now I'm going to write the output of this card to the file adapter to output.txt and the map is now almost ready to go. All I need to do is put in a rule to call the rest adapter. So let's do that now with a get. A get in this case takes an argument, the first argument being the adapter which is going to be rest the second argument is going to be the adapter connection string which in this case I'm going to turn on the both tracing I'm going to specify the method is going to be a get and finally I'm going to specify the URL which I shall paste in from my clipboard so I believe the map is now ready to run let's open the miscellaneous area you will see there's no file called output.txt at the moment so if I save build and run this map the map has completed successfully and under miscellaneous you can see not only the adapter trace m4rest.mtr but also the output file output.txt. Let's open that now. It should be a JSON file. Let's just drag that over to the right there and you can see that it contains JSON that tells us the um, information that's been returned from the remote REST API which includes the current date and time quick look at the adapter trace m4rest.mtr a little summary there of the method which was get the URL that was used and finally the data that was returned so there we go this is how to use the rest adapter to make a rest API call to a remote rest service moving on to the second part of the demonstration I will show that I have a REST API deployed locally that is being run by ITX 10.1. When we connect to the API and the endpoints page, you will notice that I have an endpoint deployed called output only. I'm going to call this API using a map on my design studio. So let's have a quick look at this particular map. Click the try out button. Um, I don't need to supply any inputs. All I need to do is hit the execute button. And if we look down here, there's the equivalent curl command. 
I could look at the output file that has been created by my recent execution, but it's far easier just to open a command prompt and just run that curl command and see the outputs at the command line. As you can see, the map that I have deployed to the ITX 10.1 REST API is performing a similar service to the one that was deployed on the remote web server that I showed, in that it is giving back some JSON that includes the current date time. Now to call this API from my map. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a copy of my test1 map because it's mostly exactly the same. I'm going to copy that as test2. In my test2 map I'm going to call the URL that I have in my curl command which is here, output only. So let's replace the uh, external reference with my internal one. And I'm also going to change the method from get to put, which is required from the ITX 10.1 REST API. So if I now save, build and run that map, the map has completed successfully. And if we look at the content of output.txt, you will see that I have the results from the local REST API. So there we have it. Two examples of how to call the REST API both remotely and one that I've deployed locally using the REST adapter in maps test1 and test2. For this last part of the demonstration I'm going to show how the map that is deployed to the ITX REST API has been built. As you can see, I currently have no maps deployed to the API. Just refresh there, completely empty. And if I go into the design server and log in, you will know that I currently have no projects. So let's start a new project. Let's call the project output only. And then within output only, let's import a schema. I'm going to use the JSON that I retrieved from the external website as a template to build my map. So that's the schema imported. If we go into maps and create a new one, we'll create a new map called output only. From the structure menu we'll create a target. The name for the card will be out1. The adapter is going to be file and I'm going to not use an existing connection. Um, I'm going to select the connection on the next screen. I'm going to be writing to a file called output.txt but this is a dummy name because I'm actually going to be output um, through the REST uh, interface. So I turn on this option here, REST output. For my schema I choose output template, that's the output template.json file I uploaded earlier. and JSON. Okay, so that's the card created. Let's expand the structure. As you can see there's an encoding field and then a JSON group and within that abbreviation, client IP, uh, date time, etc, etc. I'm only going to fill in two of these fields, that's abbreviation and date time. In abbreviation I'm going to put in the rule GMT and in the date time field I'm going to put uh, function text and in that function current date time function. All the other entries can be set to none. So there we go, that's this map completed. If I was to save and build this map, this map is ready to be deployed to the API. So let's go to the deployment screen. I'll go into packages. I have no packages defined currently, so let's create a new one. We'll call the package output only. From the project output only, we will choose the map output only and add that to the package. The package is now created and I shall now deploy that to my local REST API. Now that it's been deployed, if we go back to the Swagger page and refresh, you will note that I have got output only as uh, an endpoint that I can call either synchronously or asynchronously. And there we go, that's how to take a map that has a JSON output structure, use that JSON output data as a schema, and then create a map to create that data with fixed values and also dynamic output, and then deploy that to the REST API. 
I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.